So August 2003, uh, notable because they they're building toward their one cent pay view and the Super X Cup because. Like last year, the fairgrounds are booked over the first weekend of September, so they can't run a show then. And again, the, the anniversary of 9-11, so they don't really want to run a show then either. So TNA announced officially this week that September 10 will offer a best of TNA show at a cost of just one penny. As reported first last week, <laughs> TNA and the cable companies believe it will help lure new, in new customers if they expose them to their product. Because of TNA's limited syndication clearances and lack of any national cable clearance, they rely on publicity on the internet, cable satellite bill inserts, commercials, and word of mouth to sell their weekly pay-per-views. That hasn't really worked, as they're still only sell <laughs> selling about 8,000 to 16,000 a week on average. It's not too bad. <laughs> I, I, don't know, I don't know what I would have expected, but that seems about right. Well, when you think 8 to 16 is 80 grand to 160 grand, of which they get half of, which is 40 grand to 80 grand. Based on the initial estimates, it was about 200 grand per show they needed. I'd imagine they've worked that down dramatically these days. But I listen, I can't really imagine why anybody would buy these shows on average anyway, so... I was going to say, like, to the 8,000 people that buy it every week, what are you doing? <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> It's it's not that expensive. It's 40 bucks a month for eight hours of entertainment. I guess that's that's not the worst. I don't know. I don't know if I would pay a $40 a month streaming service that showed four shows. <laughs> well, it was it was a different time. You have to compare it to... Oh, like... here we go. The classic Garrett defense of anything wrong. <laughs> it was a different time. But no, you do have to compare it to what the market was at the time, which was not a nine ninety nine streaming service for a bundle of content. Instead, it was the same forty dollar price tag for a single three hour WWE pay per view. So that's like the price comparison. So you're getting eight hours of TNA for the same price you're getting three hours of WWE. Okay, but the point you're not considering is that most of the time it's terrible. And like I, I again, we've talked about this plenty of times. The biggest issue with these shows is they are booked like television instead of booked like pay per view. So you get stuff that just builds to stuff and they're perfectly fine doing DQ finishes and they're perfectly fine with weeks that just don't have like big hooks or big interesting matches. Though that's not really the case this month to be fair. There's a bunch of stuff on these shows like there's AJ title matches on three of them. There's the first Ultimate X. There's the big gauntlet match. So th there's not many shows this month at least that have absolutely nothing going for them. Like there were in some previous month where it's just like you guys charged people $9.99 for this absolute heap of garbage that's not even like trying to deliver on that value but there are weeks where that is the case and you are like oh the poor souls who actually paid money for this and then came back the next week and bought it again and kept coming back this loyal 8 to 16,000 people who come back every week unless there's like this big title match where they actually do a decent number the, the their loyal following every week watching these asylum shows mm. Stockholm Syndrome, being abused by NWATNA. The beginnings of the same relationships we see nowadays with Deb Every fans. Well, yeah, now we just root for brands like we root for sports teams, and who cares if it's bad? It's just my personality to like it. I want to be the guy going on forums and being like, NWATNA is actually really good. You know, I was actually thinking, like, trying to put myself in the shoes of fans in this period, and trying to think about, like, would TNA fans be reacting to, like, Dusty Rhodes in TNA the same way AEW fans are reacting to, I'm not going to use CM Punk, that's too big an example. Brian Danielson. <laughs> like, 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 remember DDP did his little run and everyone was very excited? Or, like, Nick Gage? Is, is it, like, that equivalent to TNA fans at the time? It's like, oh, Dusty, hell yeah. No, because, like, it's more sustained. He's, like, an actual part of the show. Hmm. It'd be, like, Jake Roberts. Yeah. Or Aaron Anderson, or Tully. Yeah, something more like that. Because, spoiler again, Dusty's back, and he's once again, like, the best thing on these shows. I was gonna say, honestly, you know what it might be? Dustin Rhodes. Mm. Where it's like, you were just kind of happy for him. He's just out there having a good time, having good matches, being the best part of most of the shows he's on. Mm. Having that bloody war with Cody on that first show. I was I was actually thinking about that while watching some of these shows. It's like, well, because like I wouldn't have watched these shows at the time, as as we mentioned on our very first episode. I didn't start watching TNA consistently until the end of two thousand six. So I was trying to be like put myself in the shoes of fans at this time, thinking like, well, what 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 would they think about this? What would like Dusty Rhodes or Larry Zbysko or Terry Taylor showing up? What would Mad Mikey jumping, you know, Bobby Eaton showing up be be like? Especially because he has the the Midnight Express knockoff theme again. So. Hmm. 
what would that be like to the fans at the time? Would it be like that cool thing, like like you know the the AEW surprises or stuff like that these days? And I don't know. It's hard to put it. It's a completely different scale, as mentioned. Like there's eight to sixteen thousand people buying these shows every week, and about a thousand people in the building every week, most of which is papered. And that compare that to AEW, which does I think on average five and a half thousand, and about eight hundred thousand to a million on TV every week. Completely different scales. So it's hard to like match them, but. Yeah, that was the thing I was thinking about. I think for the most part, people are probably really into it. it I, it's hard to get angry at a legend doing an appearance. Because mm. you kind of just, like... It's the easiest to turn your brain off and just enjoy this segment's thing that you can do. Especially when it's not, like, in an overbearing, like, great mood of shoving Kaito Kiyomiya down a stair- <laughs> a flight of stairs. Away. That's not a, a legend doing an appearance. That's a sustained main event push. That is a dude just keeping other people down. So when it is just like Dusty popping up to do cool six-man tags and undercard feuds with Glengilberti, and we'll see some main events of Dusty stuff coming in the next few months. But for the most part, he's there to elevate the people around him. He's not there to hold the people around him down. How nice of him. TNA officials are said to be relying heavily on the money for that their overseas television deals bring in to make up some of the losses that the North American pay-per-views are still posting. The word going around is that TNA is bankling heavily on the one cent pay-per-view concept scheduled for September to lead to improved pay-per-view sales. I don't know if they should be. Well, like, the idea is they can't get television clearance. They can't, like, market. Again, we talked about this in previous episodes, but, like, the internet is a much smaller, much more contained space these days. So, like, the idea of going viral is reaching a thousand people, not, like, ten million. So, it's it's a completely different world of promotion. So, their idea here is, well, maybe if we offer it the best of our best from our first... 12, 13 months, put it on pay-per-view for a cent, being like, listen, this is our proof of concept, this is who we are, and maybe they can trick people into thinking that's actually who they are, instead of like the Dups and Vince Russo. Uh, Listen, I don't think it's going to have a giant bump, it'll probably have a little bump, I just think you're probably going to be, you're going to end up losing money on this, because you're going to have like 20,000 people paying one penny instead of 16,000 people paying full price. But they don't have to produce a show, so there's no, like, overheads for it. I just meant in general if they were to try and continue this concept. Oh, well, yeah, that's they just give it away for free, you know? But I think that's, like, a logistics thing, as we as we noted a couple weeks ago, is that, like, it's actually just hard to do free at this point. And, like, not all the pay-per-view providers are actually taking the one-cent pay-per-view. Uh, it's in demand that R and dish or direct one of them isn't anyway one of them is getting a different special for full price so even just selling this like the the idea of the one cent pay-per-view to the pay-per-view providers is a hard sell all right that brings us to september 2003 in the nwa tna an interesting month some very big news notes which we'll get into in a minute even though it was only a three show month because we had the one cent pay-per-view and we watched that one cent pay-per-view of course and we'll be reviewing it We'll start with the one cent pay view actually because it's interesting. We'll start with the match card for it. So, my oh god, I didn't watch it. <laughs> the, the one cent pay view, September 10, 2003, was a, a two hour special uh, available for one cent on most pay view providers, even though some pay view providers didn't change the price, so it was still ten dollars for some pay uh, per view. I wonder how many people bought that. Bought it for ten? Yeah. Some people probably did. And to be fair, it's probably a better show than most TNA pay-per-views at that point that's true it has most of the better matches so it included the first ultimate x match the amw triple x steel cage match the gathering versus new church clockwork orange match jared and raven styles against jared and raven uh, jared and sting against styles and waltman the styles and d-lo cage match and the wednesday bloody wednesday match that we will talk about when we cover the september 3rd show um, an interesting choice of matches. I, I'm interested to see that there's nothing from 2002, so I think they wanted a more contemporary vision of what TNA looked like. They should have put the X Cup Finals in there instead of the Wednesday Bloody Wednesday. It was a much better match, but I guess well, I get why they put their main eventers in there as opposed to putting in Hoovy and Saban. You have all the main eventers all throughout it anyway, you know? Like, the lack of X Division like, representation is, I think, the biggest note when I look at this lineup on the show. Like... There's one match, there's Ultimate X, and then the X Division is gone entirely. There's no more X Division stuff. Yeah, there's no um, AJ, Lynn. Mm, or, like, I would have put the first X title match, especially because that match took place in front of, like, a 3,000 full crowd, so I think it would leave a good impression. But uh, I guess what you said, like you said, they wanted to give you an idea of, like, what the current TNA is. 
Yeah, all the matches were introduced by Mike Tanay and Don West. They had wraparounds. They had the video packages where relevant. And then the show ended with a push to uh, Raven against Shane Douglas in the hair versus hair match the week following. So, like, they did try to sell you on coming back the week after. So, like, I, I, there's some matches I wouldn't have included. Like, Styles D'Lo in the cage is probably a match I wouldn't have included. I think there's better matches you could put in there. I don't know. That match is silly, and I would appreciate it if it was on my... And it's, like, four minutes long. <laughs> You, you just want it there because Eric Watts is involved and you need people exposed to Watts. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, like you said, you're going to put all the stars on the show. <laughs> yeah, Russo, you get Watts. Yeah. Gathering versus the New Church. I, I, again, I get why it's there and like who it represents and who it represents in the show. But a weird match to include, even though it is a good match. It's a fun match. Mm. I guess they probably just wanted to like get the, the gathering in there and to get like... Was Douglas in that match as well, or was it just pure New Church? It was Douglas. Yeah, and to get Douglas on there too, is pr- it's probably important to get Douglas versus Raven on there in some way, considering the whole end of it was them hyping up the Herbert's hair match. This was that Tane wants to expose thousands, if not tens of thousands, of wrestling fans to their style of wrestling for the first time. To do that, they purchased ad time during Raw on cable systems across the country, plugging their one-cent pay-per-view this Wednesday. The plug doesn't actually have any any matches, but does show Sting, Raven, Jarrett, Styles, and Sandman, even though Sandman didn't end up being in the special, among other TNA featured wrestlers. Jeremy Borash does the voiceover, stating it's the style of wrestling you won't see on Monday nights. So, oh, shots, Liam, shots fired. Heavy shot at Dark. <laughs> the pay-per-view isn't live, but instead features a best-of format featuring all the matches we mentioned there. Imagine if it was live, and it was just all the same matches, but done again. In front of an empty arena. Do it legit. Yeah. No, it's just a very confused group of fans. Reenacting each match, move for move. I like it better if it's all different mo- matches completely. Like, they rework it completely. Have different finishes. Or it's like inside the actor studio, but for wrestling, where they'll do the move, and then they'll turn to the camera, and it's like... So we did this because we wanted you to feel... <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would watch that. <laughs> mm. TNA hopes those who see the best of show this Wednesday will be convinced to order future two-hour live pay-per-views on upcoming Wednesday nights. A lot is riding on this week's ad campaign and one-cent pay-per-view and drawing future paying customers. Wow. So not only did they take out ads on Raw, they also handed out flyers for their one-cent pay-per-view the fans outside Huntsville, Alabama, where WWE had an event. I wonder how many WWE fans tuned in. I mean, they probably, well, if they had the flies of those guys on it, they're probably like, ooh, Jarrett, Sting, Raven, WCW's back? <laughs> WWA is back? <laughs> yeah, they, they, they're all big fans of um, the WWA card, and they're like, all right, let's go. I see Road Dog. that's all I need. <laughs> I see Hoovy. So, the estimates, and take these with a considerable grain of salt, were that the show did around 100,000 buys. Hell yes. Dave Meltzer later clarifies that that I think that number comes from the fact that it did 10 times higher buys in a lot of key markets. So it, it, that, that where they usually do 10,000, they did 10 times better. So they're like extrapolating that out to be about 100,000. But if they did do 10 times better in markets, that's a lot of people buying the show. It, it's at least a decent number of people sampling, even if obviously if 100,000 people buy the show for a cent, that means you just made $1,000. Do we ever find out the numbers for the shows immediately after the one set pay-per-view? There is no th- nothing in the notes, so we'll see. There was no like rise in attendance or anything, so they didn't get that kind of bump. The attendance was pretty flat afterwards, actually. Uh, I doubt how many people are the how many of the locals are buying that, you know? I don't know. I would be like, oh, it'd be fun to revisit some of the best matches because obviously this is a not an era where it's impossible to track these shows down. But like, you can't just download the show and watch your Triple X against AMW match again. Yeah. They have to do their trade taping with Baby Me. Exactly. They're like, I'll give you this triple X AMW tape in exchange for your Aja Kong All Japan Women's tapes. And I said, no way, mate. <laughs> the one set pay-per-view was their, their big swing. We'll we'll see did it tr- turn out to do anything. But like, if, if I'm about 10 times better than usual, bought the show, that's exposure you weren't getting, even if you made no money back from it immediately. Yeah. 